testing the ice. In January, we test the ice. A clutch of us down by Stillman's stables. An unbroken stallion, 18 hands at least, braying in the paddock. Too big and too mean for anyone but mad Kevin to ride. Its breath a pearly scald, a cloud inversion filling the yard. The stone bridge curls in on itself and over the canal where we swam in summer and came out cankered, where my mother once found half of a cow, its black end preserved in the water's algal cataract. It's safer now, since we learned to burn our waste instead of drowning it. We hyperextend our plastic bagged rebox until the rough new frost licks our toes clean of horse shit and none of us are brave enough to let go of the bank. Our fingers numbed, little anchors rending fibre from the mud, until one of us, the smallest, breaks the chain, slides clear of the rest, and in a second is across the slick translucence. Crowfoot and iris, bubbling up under our daps, we take turns to skate its glazed breath. And for the last time in our lives, the water holds us. Uh, so my name is CJ Wagstaff. I'm a queer and trans writer uh, living in South Wales. And my writing spans poetry, non-fiction, the occasional uh, short story. And more recently, I've been reviewing for several online magazines. Um, across poetry, books, uh, music and live events. And a, a lot of my creative output um, seeks to join the conversation around how we relate to the natural world uh, and the funny little um, complex ways in which we react, uh, we interact with uh, wildlife and wilderness uh, and also to, to decenter the self uh, and human priorities and needs while also drawing sort of comparisons um, and links between uh, us and extra human life. And though I do try to move away from the personal and the self, that there is still a lot of me in these poems. And that's often how my process sort of starts, is with uh, a memory or a moment or an image from my daily life um, that is quite specific, um, that, that I then work with to broaden and create something more meaningful. So I'm using um, things that are concrete and close to talk about things that are a bit further away and a little bit, bit more abstract. Uh, one of my other priorities is also sound. Um, I'm a musician and an amateur dancer, um, and so I'm, I'm always listening to the sound quality of my work. Um, and I, I, I don't usually write to form, and I, I don't, um, don't usually um, use a strict rhyme scheme, um, but it's always there somehow, um, whether that's in, in chime or um, in rhythm and metre. Uh, sound is always a, a priority when I'm writing too. Welcome home. All of April I hear jackdaws. Their clawed clatter on the attic floor above me, jotting their illegible code, their kaleidoscopic scroll, gears turning in the wheel of the spirograph. Each day they come bills stuffed with twigs and mud, a knot of dog hair, a bale of dried grass. After a year away, the young couple surveying, necks ticking with bewilderment. They assess the roof, the gutter, chimney flues and breasts, the soffit and fascia, each failed connection, each negative space, a welcome home, lover, where have you been? So I've always felt sort of compelled um, to write. My great-grandfather was a poet and as a child I was always submitting to um, young writers anthologies and forward poetry anthologies, none of which I'd dream of sharing today. Um, but then as, as a teenager and a young adult I actually became quite unwell to the extent that it was quite difficult to write and I found myself um, unable to engage with that craft. 
Um, and so I, th I think what part of what drives me today is um, gratitude for having that back in my life um, and, and to myself for, for uh, overcoming these sort of difficulties um, uh, to the extent where it, it almost feels rude and disrespectful to, to not engage with that craft um, because it's, it's a gift. Um, and there's, there's so much as well about um, how people are using language that is really surprising and exciting to me. Um, and I think I, I, I see that as, as a reviewer and I feel uh, lucky that that is part of my um, creative output, um, that uh, I get to sort of engage and witness all these novel and creative ways that uh, people are finding to um, deliver an image or a narrative. So this is from my review of Hollywood or Home by Catherine Gray. This collection, produced by leading Welsh publisher Seren, is a thing of binaries, of courage and diffidence, of desolation and humour, of bitter irony and genuine good faith from the speaker's guarantee that even the roses have it coming to them, in portrait of my superego as mommy dearest, to finding life's saccharine justification in beautiful berries. Each individual piece acknowledges the uncertainty and inconsistency of a layered existence. Gray, a prolific editor and enabler, writes with a voice which is clear and assured, interspersing brazen narrative stance with moments of intimate, per intimate personal reflection. In Michael McIntyre is worth $50 million, the speaker shares, this is how life tends to happen. You play in at your soul for the wrong art and end up with the shavings, unless you're Michael McIntyre. The work is human, playful with its vulnerability, using its familiar cultural touch points as a kind of protec protective armor. Through its frank humor, it denotes the black comedy of an iniquitous world with shrewd linguistic acumen. The lyrical embodiment of, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. So I'm just about to start a PhD in creative writing, so um, I would hope that I'm able to publish the, that research in, in the form of my first non-fiction book. Um, I would also love to uh, publish one or two trap books, I think. Um, I'm currently working on my first manuscript, um, so to have that developed uh, would be absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think also to uh, start to immerse myself a little bit more fully in this rich poetry ecosystem that we've got in, in South Wales and, and, and to feel surrounded um, by uh, all these kind of um, enriching voices. Um, in a way that, that uh, is worthwhile and meaningful. At the cinema, no one danced but us. Just sat and studied the spew of colour, painting meaning onto polyvinyl. Next to me in the dark, your body stood, a leg against my own, narrow fingers tapping out the groove underneath my shirt, finding each song's pattern on my bare chest. We danced in just our socks, flickering light falling all around us, feet shuffling, summoning a static from the carpet like a seagull's syncopated worm dance. The room burned and bled like a bleached film reel, like that morning on the train from Taftswell, paper bags swinging, splitting, full of fruit. <laughs>